Good morning, ladies. I hope you've had a great week. Today, I want us to begin talking about the fear of the Lord. I recently received a copy of Dr. Piccarelli's new book, Readings in Proverbs, Ancient Wisdom for a Modern Age. And for those of us that were in college, while Dr. Pick was an instructor, we had Bible and some had Greek. And those are sweet memories. He's also a family friend being classmates with my mom and dad back in the early years of the college. But in the early part of his book, he challenged us with three major purposes for the book of Proverbs. And this just kind of sent me on a study for this week. And they are to know wisdom and instruction. We ought to personalize it and internalize it till it becomes our own to discern sayings with understanding. That's that genuine perception, that insightfulness that affects how we act. And then to receive instruction and accept correction because those two things produce wise behaviors. It's not a self-centeredness. It's not a social consciousness. It's moral integrity. And so wisdom produces a change in action. It's not just an accumulation of knowledge. Proverbs imparts and tells us truths and skills for godly living. We're supposed to be able to act wisely, to be deliberate in our actions, and to act with foresight when facing challenges and temptations that are going to come to us in this life. Knowledge and wisdom are closely related. Knowledge is the focus on correct understanding of the world and my place as a creature of the magnificent, loving creator God. Wisdom, on the other hand, is an acquired skill of applying knowledge rightly or the skill of godly living. Yet our moral life begins with reverence and humility before our Creator and Redeemer. The core of this book, the theme of the book, and the key verse of the book are found in Proverbs 1-7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. It's going to appear again in chapter 9 and in chapter 15. What is that fear of the Lord? Fear is that reverential awe, but it also has respectful submission. The biblical term piety refers to being devoted, and it's your standard of belief and faithfulness and loyalty. The opposite, deception, falsehood, treachery. Submission to the Lord is foundational to attaining real and genuine understanding. The opposite would be trusting one's own wisdom and understanding. Various proverbs remind us that fools despise wisdom and instruction. So they make foolish choices in their life, which bear consequences. And so throughout this book, we're going to see that contrast of wisdom and folly. And it's a personal choice. The fear of the Lord is a reverential awe toward God with the submission. It involves taking him seriously, both fearing his judgment, but holding him in the highest regard and respect and the deepest love. Because when we do that, it's going to spill out of us in true worship. The fear of the Lord is the foundation, the first step, the first principle. It is the beginning of all wisdom. And Solomon reminds us that one can only be truly wise when he or she acknowledges that wisdom comes from the Lord himself. That person will then root his or her pursuit of wisdom in personal worship of the Lord. It would kind of be like you've got to know the alphabet before you can read. 
you've got to know musical notes before you can perform a musical piece. You've got to know numbers before you can compute mathematical processes. So we have to, in order to attain wisdom, we have to fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord precedes wisdom. So let's look at these verses that have the fear of the Lord. Chapter 1 and verse 29 and 30. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would have none of my counsel and despise my every rebuke. It can get too late to call on the Lord because you hated knowledge and rejected wisdom when it was made available to you. What about in chapter 2, verses 2 to 5? Incline your ear to wisdom. Apply your heart to understanding. If you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Who is that her? What is that her? Well, in verse 2, it's wisdom and understanding. And then in verse 3, it's discernment and understanding. So understanding the fear of the Lord enables us to find the knowledge of God. Our ears will be attentive to wisdom. Our heart will be inclined to understanding. We will ask, we will lift up our voice, we will cry out for understanding. But all of that is bound in our personal relationship to the Lord Jesus. While wisdom is to be sought diligently and we are to cultivate it in practice, it's not something we earn. It's not something we merit. Wisdom is a gift from God and it's given to protect our way, to help us as we live this life. Then in Proverbs 3, verse 7 and 8, it says, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. We're not to be impressed by any kind of personal ability or shrewdness. We're not to rely on our own resources. We are not wise in our own eyes. Instead, we recognize that fearing the Lord is best for us. We trust Him. We trust His resources to provide our needs. We reverently obey Him. We make the choice to turn away from evil. And then what spills out of us is worship from our heart into our actions. And then in chapter 9 and verse 10, we see the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So in this verse, not only is the fear of the Lord equated with wisdom, it's equated with knowledge of the Holy One. Those of us who worship and know the Lord submit to his authority and consequently will grow in wisdom and righteousness. And again, that's repetitious of chapter 1 and verse 7. And then in chapter 15 and verse 33, we read, The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. So to be wise, we have to be teachable. We have to accept humble reproof, wise reproof. We have to belong to the company of the wise. We have to have humble spirits. And what is the opposite? We don't listen. We refuse. We don't heed our discipline. We neglect what has been pointed out to us. We lack good sense and understanding. It's clearly a choice we have to make because the fear of the Lord 
that reverential worshiping him in submission makes possible instruction which will then lead us to wisdom if we want the honor that comes from being wise we have to humbly receive instruction from the Lord and from his mouthpieces in biblical times those were the prophets the priests the judges the apostles for us there are pastors the preachers that we sit under the teachers that teach us God's word those who proclaim his word to us biblical wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord are we teachable are we humble are we willing to listen to reproof and does true worship just spill out of us because we fear the Lord that is my prayer for you and that is my prayer for me have a great week